Another day, another psychic adventure. Here comes another psychic. Dimple, what do you think we should do with him? He's probably just another fake. Dimple forms a spirit gang. <laughs> Is Dimple being exorcised? Oh no! <laughs> Couldn't happen to a nicer, more benevolent spirit. I'm just joking. I'm sure Dimple will impress at some point. To him, his motivation is getting something out of this, controlling mob or gaining power or whatever. But he doesn't realize he's already been pulled into mob's gravity. He's on a journey of his own. You never really know the journey you're on. <laughs> Except in hindsight, I guess, if you're lucky. Life is just sort of this weird combination of where you think you're headed and also where life wants to take you. Inside, evil spirit. Is this an episode about my life? I don't know what they want us to do yet, but the client is a financial bigwig. Meaning he's got tons of money. He even paid for our tax. We can restock up on Himalayan Why salt taking the train? to save money for Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt ain't cheap, mob. How can one man own a place like this? <laughs> I like how it's a reasonably reasonable sized house. That's big, but it's you know. They look shady or what? Oh, it's a costume party. I'll bet they're fellow psychics. Oh, it's. Not a costume party? Is this how psychic stress? Hey, look who it is! The surprisingly athletic, surprisingly real psychic. I have no doubt that I've been able to assemble the finest group of real psychics this country has to offer. What is Bradley doing here? She's 14. We're observing her through a one-way mirror. I see they first tried to cure her with teddy bears. An evil spirit has entered her body and is controlling her. And I'd like for one of you to eliminate it. Nothing out of the ordinary anyway. Yeah, there's something else going on here. Some puberty induced mental illness then. Puberty induced mental illness is redundant. It's just called puberty. I am sensing a faint but wicked presence. And it's extremely nearby. That <laughs> was a dimple. <laughs> Sound good, mob? There's a bonus in it for you. A bonus? I was not thinking money, I was thinking Get vegetable things. In the first place. No, hold it. Vegetables or beans. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. No, that's a game I... <laughs> you got my attention. A chance at redemption. I'm going to play paper. Uh, Don't tell me. Supposed to give that away. No, I'll go scissors this time. Wait, Dude, this is a con. Really? Yeah, this is this is all planned. This is not... Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, this is going way too fast. I need a chance to think here. This is critical. I failed the finale rock, paper, scissors, and that has haunted me ever since then. First he said paper, which put the idea of scissors in people's heads, but then he said scissors. I think rock is a safe bet because one of the things will happen, people will choose scissors to beat paper or they'll choose rock to beat scissors, which means rock will be a draw and not a loss. I'm going rock. Please let this be right. That's just what he's like. So is he throwing unless, <laughs> unless that's what he wants me to think. Maybe he wants people to come to that conclusion so that they'll play paper, in which case he'll play scissors like he said. No, I'm going rock. I'm going, I'm guessing Reagan goes rock. That's my choice. On three. As usual, Reagan won. No! How did you do that? My boy, there's no one who can beat me at rock, paper, scissors. Bye then, see you losers. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I mean, I beat Reagan, but my goal was to be with Reagan and win against the other guys. I hope I get another chance at this. It's gonna bug me for the rest of my life. I like how they're all dead. Literally died from rock, scissors, paper. I completely understand. <laughs> Why is this so important to me? Why did I say I knew him? They're gonna hate me. <laughs> Please save my daughter. I beg you. On it. He's walking in very confidently. It's impossible for me to cure a psychological illness in a girl I've just met. I like how that implies he might be able to do it at all. Do you know why you're locked up in here? I don't. I have no idea. Maybe that's part of the problem. He started locking me in my room. Oh no. Oh oh no. He even hit me sometimes. No. I mean. I don't hit her that hard. Why would you expose yourself like this? And let them hover around me and touch my body. No, you're twisting around what happened. Like he's possessed or something. Father is the possessed one. What was he hoping would come out of this exorcism then? The demon insider is making my daughter I mean, he basically already confessed. Am I... Am I going to be tied to this bed forever? This is awful. Well, I feel like this is an easy one to solve. I'll ask your dad and see what I can do. Maybe you should ask the police. You haven't adapted to the change in your relationship and refused to accept it. So instead, you started blaming it on spirits and demons. Oh, that takes on a dark no, tone for the teddy bears. Listen. He's trying to keep her a child. Creepy as hell. There's a nasty one in there. Something's definitely wrong. So you just want to pocket that reward money. It's Anybody a tricky one. She managed to trick should pack up and get out of here. You seriously didn't notice anything? I believe him. That means she must have heard everything we said. Whoops. <laughs> 
she had me going. I really thought it was father. It's a colorful bunch. These <laughs> psychics. That one seems effective. Watch me drink it. <laughs> what the hell was that? What is he drinking? Never mind. I don't want to know. Let's just get out of here. Ooh. Keiji Mogami. Never heard of him. He's especially powerful. Keiji Mogami was an incredibly popular psychic. He used seances and his channeling abilities. Is this the demon that killed people in need. Keiji, or and is it Keiji? I couldn't get enough of him. He disappeared from the public eye, as if he just vanished. Ah, that's what we saw in the intro. He was an assassin who used his powers to kill, but he was desperate for money. And perhaps for a dishwasher. That's when I first ran into him. He came to try to exorcise me. So that was in the past. I give up. <laughs> that was fast. I'm not out here to punish you. I came to absorb you. Uh, absorb oh, he's like me? a spirit eater. Huh? He's like all for one. I'm gonna teach a lesson to those bastards who think nothing bad could ever happen to them. I'm going to this show. This is my hero academia. Those who use others and toss them aside will know fear. He's Shigaraki with All For One's powers. What, did someone not help him when he was wandering the streets alone? It's a weird idea though, right? Like, does anyone need reminding that life is cruel? That's sort of the default. Everything else is just an amazing lucky bonus. Are we lacking for hatred? It's sort of there for the taking at any moment. But that's not really what it's about, right? It's about revenge. Perhaps a sort of targetless revenge that just comes from a place of extreme resentment of just the world in general. What does he feel the world owes him that he wasn't able to get? What does all that have to do with right now? There's a this connection. This spirit is him! Keiji Mogami, okay, psychic yeah. star of the 20th century. Or what's become of him. I mean, he got his wish. Give the guy credit for goal achievement. All of you are weaklings. Except for Mob. What was his plan by being in that bed for so long? It's a shame I'm so terrible at rock, paper, scissors. Tell me about it. Leave this mortal plane forever! <laughs> <laughs> so he's good at theatrics. I'm learning so much. He doesn't spread salt around or use a chant or anything. I know, right? No style at all. So that's it. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, he can shift bodies. <laughs> Sort of horrifying. Reagan just takes action, this guy. <laughs> this bottomless barrel of spirit fighting techniques. Are you always into young girls or He won't stop? Oh, Mob's struggling a little bit. Oh my oh my god! Is this a fake out like the twin? That is not a fake out like the twin. That is not a body double. That's a first for the show, right? You're not leaving already, are you? Uh, well, this uh, mob. <laughs> hey mob. Um, so yeah, hey mob. Hey mob. I like his shirt. I like these mid cards. These like pencil mid cards, pretty cool. I'm also a good exorcist, and I'm gonna. <laughs> just a just a normal punch in the face. But what about the joints of a doll? <laughs> you can move them however you want. <laughs> that poor girl's body. Oh no. Oh no. You can't go all out. Yeah, she's a hostage. I'm going to end this. It's funny how Mob has the anime protagonist thing when it counts, you know what I mean? The kid definitely has a spine. <laughs> yes. Just a kid, but he's super strong. Join the cult, the cult of mob. You're saying he's stronger than you? Yes. No. Wow, that's sort of shocking. Screwed. I need to chase him from the inside. How does a living human materialize inside somebody else's body? By leaving theirs. Oh, there's a little callback to a previous episode. During the time you're doing that, your body will be defenseless. Mm. Can you possess my body and protect it for a while? Could I? Oh no, that's not a very good <laughs> idea, Mob. No, no, but he's in Mob's gravity. I'm sure it'll be fine. 
to backstab or betray people who are really just good, you know, people who are actually great, is sort of the ultimate evil. It's just proliferating your own garbage tendencies into the few things in this world that are actually beautiful. I feel like Dimple is more of just a, a scoundrel than like a really terrible spirit. And weirdly, I think part of what ensures that Dimple will not abuse this too much is that very sentiment, that very purity, that very sort of generous spirit, trusting spirit. One thing I've been thinking about recently is an idea that as much as we'd like to believe otherwise, there's very, very little control we have over other people and outcomes in terms of how people treat us or what people do. And the experience of betrayals or people breaking their promises sort of pushes one into a wounded and I guess defensive territory where the solution that naturally arises is to like engage with the game and to win, you know, like a common tactic among people who feel like they're losing leverage in relationships they care about or feel suddenly vulnerable is to attempt to win through certain types of manipulation. Maybe it's like playing a victim and trying to push out other people's sympathies, like see what you did to me or whatever, guilt tripping, threats. If you're going to treat me like X, then I'm going to go ahead and do Y, etc. If you don't value me, I'm leaving, etc. These kinds of sort of outbursts. But weirdly, as soon as you enter that territory, you've kind of just become the same. You know, you've become no better in a way where you are now engaging in a certain type of deceit where you're trying to get something without directly being clear or honest about what that, that thing is and what you actually need. And I actually think a better strategy, a better defense, long-term at least, even though it's more terrifying, is to be completely good and be completely honest because one of two things will happen. The person will be disarmed in the sense that they are no longer able to play that game, you know? It sort of ends that cycle of tit-for-tat, keeping a mental checklist or tally of wrongdoing or game playing. And if they have any decency at all, that will make it a lot harder to continue down that line of action. Or they just don't have that. They don't have the decency. They don't have the control of themselves or their actions. And in that case, it's a lot easier, I think, for oneself to sort of come to a clear resolution. It's like, if you can see clearly that you actually really gave your best, were purely unselfish, did not do anything that was deceitful, did not seek manipulation, did not seek to wound someone else in order to get them over to your side or to care about you or whatever, your heart is sort of clear in a way where you can see like, okay, no, it's it's actually not me at all. It's not me. I like am only interested in doing what feels like loving the other person. And it's tricky because there's a lot of room for self-delusion in there. You know, we'll do things that are actually about seeking attention or seeking the kind of emotional reciprocation we want that we tell ourselves are good and pure actions that aren't. So, you know, self-honesty is important there. But I think if done right, it has a freeing effect. And it's really hard because you basically have to walk yourself through all the ways in which you are actually acting out of darkness, which is unpleasant. It's a lot easier or convenient to just blame the other person and to continue playing those games. It's a little bit different for Ma because his life is at stake with Dimple, but I feel like a similar thing applies where Dimple knows just how evil it would be to destroy something as beautiful as Mob. Just in a more general sense, you know, people who are really strong and have sort of their own darkness figured out, or at least have their darkness internalized or localized to themselves, have a lot less to fear from other people. It's the fear of people using our own manipulative or deceitful tactics against us to win that is sort of more terrifying, more soul-crushing. First, I need to lose consciousness. Concentrate. Has he changed a little recently? Yeah, he's changed a lot. He's, he's working on it. To change himself. He's really working on it. Well, that works surprisingly well. Wow. When I concentrate on sleeping, my mind is anything but. Take that. I, lo I love these analog attacks. Hey, there's Dimple. Dumbass. <laughs> Honestly, the punches and kicks seem to be more, more effective than anything else on this guy. I've had plans for this body for a long time. That's not, not all it is, though, right? What's another spirit doing? Damn, looks awesome. Interrupting me. Now she can His guard is down, yeah. That's a cute little Casper ghost. Got him. All right. You can do this, mob. What does the battle look like on the inside, I wonder? I wonder if there's like a, a sympathy thing happening here, or kind of metaphor being set up, being in someone else's to make your life in here, shoes. Soul would have been annihilated. Big risk. But you seem so human to me right now. His face, it looks so evil. <laughs> mob is looking for sympathy even in this moment. There's Mob being sympathetic. I've never met anyone with the power you have. Cutting this guy to ribbons. It's an interesting, uh, interesting single incarnation of psychic power comes from. Shot there. I'm sorry, but I don't have a lot of time. I, I want to know. You. They're from feelings. Makes sense. Still don't understand, do you? This was a trap. I allowed to watch. you inside deliberately. Take two people, one who lives oh, happily and another living in misery. Which of these two people has stronger feelings? The answer Ooh. is the latter. Negative feelings are inherently stronger. Wrong. Man, this is awesome. This is really some dark side of the forest type stuff right here. So yeah, this is one what I just said goes horribly wrong because it's it's life or death. I mean, there's a point, right? Put forth more than you're willing to lose because there actually are people like that who are just terrible. And this guy will definitely destroy Mob if it keeps going this way. Which 
like any feeling empathetic human being i don't know you couldn't do this you couldn't crush this sweet boy like this without hating yourself which maybe he does there are some things he's not wrong about though negative emotions are a really powerful force in fact i'm pretty resolute in my idea that they can be a really good force if channeled correctly you know i often take things that i feel really frustrated by or feel really sad about and put it into actions that i feel benefit me or improve my life in in hopefully wholesome ways although sometimes it can be hard to distinguish the line when you're in that state anger is a super powerful motivator i even think revenge is great it's just like what form does the revenge take? There's that saying that success is the best revenge. That I feel is a good example of that. You feel hateful. You feel like you've been wronged. You you want people to suffer. There are definitely more wholesome ways to process that. But, you know, channeling it into productive energy is not the worst. But I don't agree that those emotions are stronger than positive emotions. I just think they're easier. It's easier to fall down than it is to climb up. But man, the heights can be pretty sweet too. Speaking of energy, there's a lot you can do with that as well. Mob is already doing it even if the people around him don't fully realize it. He's pulling everyone forward because he's so great and it's a lot harder for him i mean clearly he's struggling he's trying to have the battle with this evil demon while not letting himself turn off the part of his brain that's telling him that this evil spirit has some humanity left that's good news for you it means you can become even stronger than you are now you just have to change the way you look at the world a little what this guy's doing is not strength it's morning what how do we get from there to here i've taken the liberty of altering your memories a bit as well as removing your powers. Oh. Let's see what you're like without your abilities. He's gonna be similar. I feel, oh no, I want more of this. <laughs> this is sort of fascinating. We're like in mob psyche, as well as the demon psyche at the same time. This guy works really well as a potential future mob or a potential realization of, I guess some of mob's deepest fears and his biggest danger. Cause he has all this power and he doesn't have life figured out. I mean, he has life more figured out than he realizes, but it doesn't feel that way to him. And everyone has their own range of tolerances for how long they can live in that space. But sooner or later, if you don't find resolutions or you don't start feeling like you're climbing out of it or things are progressing, it's rare that people stay still. They sort of go in one direction or the other. And if they're not getting better, there's a good chance that untapped energy ends up being a personally destructive one, especially people with, let's say a lot of talent or a lot of expectations about life or really high expectations of oneself or one's life. If one isn't able to attach tangible consequences to those traits that can be a really embittering process and this is also a risk that we've very directly seen explored in mob he has this shadow right he has this darkness inside of him that is maybe not him but is also probably him in some way it's something he fears about himself and so it's something he has to confront you know he can't be fully maximized in who he is and his powers without contemplating the danger of it contemplating the responsibility that that brings and his capacity for evil which seems to be what this guy is it'll be interesting to see what this internal spiritual journey looks like without power Although I feel like his powers are not the source of his greatness and they're not even really what he identifies with. But then how does he get out of it and how does he defeat the spirit? I have a feeling it's going to include an honest reflection that Mob needs to have. And I do feel like the shared body thing might play into ideas of sympathy and understanding, which might be exactly the right antidote for someone who feels like the world has wronged him. As a final side note, the show giving us confirmation that psychic powers is not really psychic powers, right? It's just sort of life and human composition and emotion. It's very cool how there's a clear, well thought out parallel and themes of humanity underpinning the whole experience. 